There's raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, every kind of berry. So we have all our herbs. A lot of stuff got pulled out because it's the end of the season and it, you know, kind of coarse this time. So we were picking cucumbers off this fence. Like the entire perimeter was all cucumbers. Right, right. You know, here are some habaneros that are just coming in. Yep. These are beans, which really need to get picked. Um, lemon verbena. Mm. Uh, tomatillos. Yeah. Got some. Uh, why don't we make a cocktail with that to start? You know how you wanted a cocktail for them yeah. to start. This is the Mexican tarragon. Yeah, this is tarragon. Wow. We could do a little tarragon fizz with a little shake up a little gin in here. Give them a little half portion. Yeah. So they don't get too hammered before dinner. Right. Well, here is the cilantro which we were using to flavor the gin. So cucumber cilantro with hops and Bar Hill gin. Mm -hmm. and what kind of cilantro is this? Because it doesn't this, look like the traditional. It's not, because I don't like the traditional. This one's called Delfino. It's like, well, first of all, grow it. Yeah, go outside, <laughs> grow it. Take it, cook it. Yeah, someone's like, so who's your farmer? I'm like, uh, me? More than anything, I think it's symbolic. Um, you know, we bring the front of the house out here and show them because a lot of people who work in the front aren't as connected to food because they're not making it and they might not know about farms. They might not have worked at, you know, a farm to table restaurant like Blue Hill or something like of that nature. Um, but it's educational. So for me, this is inspiration. It can happen when I see stuff grow. It's like, okay, how do we use it? Or I say to the bartenders, like, hey, there's all these herbs and flowers. Like, go there, pick something. Like, I just give everyone free rain. I'm like, make whatever you want. Like, let's just taste it. Um, the church did a free camp for kids, local kids. And so we brought them in and we gave them tours of the garden. And when it was peaking, you know, all the herbs were here. And so we did like a sensory thing where all the kids get to touch herbs and smell them. And they're like, wow, this smells like lemon. And, you know, it's just about starting a conversation you know, and integrating it into the community and having people be like, oh, it's really cool to grow your own food or eat healthy, fresh food rather than eat McDonald's. Right. Process commercialized herb in here and shake it up and make it nice for, excuse me, for, the, uh, for the actual dish. So I'm going to take the parts that are more woody and leave the parts that have flowers and are more tender for eating. Why don't, why don't we use this? Why don't we um, experiment with a little Welcome cocktail. I mean, you can even be in this. Grab the mortar and pestle, please. That is coriander seed. Fresh. And I was like, holy smokes. So that's how the ceviche came. First sounds good. That might be too sweet because they use prosecco. I have to switch it to the cremant. It looks pretty good, right? I want to make a drink called the Barbershop. Yeah? <laughs> Alright. Remember that. <laughs> I remember when you were like, I want to do a drink. Ooh. The rhubarb swizzle. That's great. Try that. We didn't even have that on yet. I like the That's wonderful. And I don't want to like rhubarb. Yeah. I really don't like rhubarb. You taste but everything. When I tasted that, that was rock. I taste the honey. That's why when we took it off. That's great. And you get the honey tarragon, tarragon is like it's so pretty. Forget about it. Ada, like <laughs> instant connection. And I've met him before, but we hadn't really had a ton of time to talk. It was instant connection. And we spent the day talking about food. We spent the day talking about, you know, sort of the way he thinks about this restaurant why he was excited to do this dinner, and then we spent about 45 minutes walking to the garden uh, down the street, which I'd never seen before, and picking food and picking garnishes uh, for tonight's uh, meal and tonight's cocktails. Uh, one, of the, one of the garnishes that we picked um, is the tarragon. Uh, I think this is a Mexican tarragon, is what he said. So, the, the cocktail that we're starting out with um, right now is a lighter cocktail um, made with our gin, Barville gin, um, 
lemon juice, a tarragon simple syrup um, topped with uh, champagne and um, that sprig of tarragon. So we're so happy to have Alex uh, here from Bar Hill. Um, before I even knew Alex and knew the whole story, I happened to have a taste of the gin, and I was like, wow, this is so unique and different, what, what's going on here? Which then led to a conversation and reading the label and understanding that there was a really special product and there was a really great story behind that product. Um, and so we've been working together for a couple of years, and um, you know, I was never, you know, obviously we're, we're part of the table, and what's really important to us is something that's as local and fresh and it's accessible to us in supporting our farms. I mean, we actually have our own 85-acre organic farm in Washington, Connecticut. Um, and as Alex was saying, we also have a plot that we walk to down the street in another plot about a mile down the road. The gin is so wonderful um, and so aromatic that we ended up using it originally at the well in a couple dishes where we were pairing it with some raw oysters. And I did an event at the Guggenheim where it was a high-end caviar tasting and we were serving it with the drop of the Bar Hill Gin because it's so aromatic and so beautiful and so subtle in its, in its own way that um, it, it just added to the complexity of the dish and made it great. So our first course is um, scallops, and which are from Stonington, Connecticut, and some shrimp as well. This is a ceviche, and this dish was born from the garden as well, walking around uh, when, someone, when anything goes to seed, um, you think it's the end of it. You're like, oh, I can't use it. The herb is done. It's gone to seed. So I picked all the seeds, and the cilantro seed is what makes coriander. But when it's green and fresh, it has a completely different flavor profile than that brown, brown ball that's in the container in your kitchen. And it was so fresh and so bright and so citrusy, um, I said, this has to be paired with a gin. And so we did the gin infused with the coriander berries crushed up, and then just so it would be straight alcohol in the dish, uh, we juice some fresh cucumbers. Um, and that's really the base of this dish, and so it was meant to complement the cocktail as well. I just wanted to mention about the spirit um, this is 100% fermented and distilled raw honey. So this is uh, a vodka that's made with no grains and no potatoes. Um, it is literally just the distilled mead I spoke about earlier. Um, and what we don't do with this vodka is we don't charcoal filter it. Um, there's a reaction that actually occurs when the vodka is cooked with the tomato in particular. Um, because of the acidity and the natural sweetness, it actually enhances the quality of the tomato flavor, which is why the dish is a classic dish. Um, the polenta is uh, stone ground in upstate New York, and uh, it's grown by a gentleman who owns a store called The Wild High. He started out as a beekeeper. Um, and so we actually charred the husk of the corn to make the base to make the polenta. So we got, we're kind of incorporating a lot of beef flavors in here. aged like a whiskey. So we actually use new charred American oak casks, which by law are the same type of barrels that you have to age bourbon or rye. So I'm very fond of porchetta. Um, I find that it's an underutilized cut of meat, and also when people do utilize it, it's often time prepared in the same way. And this is a very classic preparation, but I think it's done well. It's extremely tender and very flavorful. So uh, when we're playing around with the Tomcat, um, for me this is a gin that I'm not very familiar with, and but it really drinks more like a bourbon in my opinion because of the barrel and the cask age. So I was trying to think about something um, like if I was going with bourbon, like what I might pair, and so I was leading myself towards pork and apples being great in the fall, and pork and apples work well, and we kind of ended up in this direction. So anyhow. Joy, I have a million more things I wanted to talk about. We can talk about it later. But thank you again. Thank you, Chef. Actually, thank you so much, Chef. No, thank you for coming. Yeah, this is very much. Awesome.
Fire, yeah. Ceviche, ceviche, chips and drops.